At 2.25 p.m. on February the 5th, 1992, two UDA gunmen entered Sean Graham's bookmakers on the lower Armour Road, Belfast. Armed with an automatic assault rifle, the first gunman raked the small, confined room with gunfire, striking almost everyone inside. As the injured and dying lay incapacitated, the second gunman then moved across the blood-soaked floor, shooting as many people as he could with a 9mm Browning pistol. The whole attack lasted less than a minute. Five people were killed, including 15-year-old James Kennedy and 18-year-old Peter McGee. Jack Duffin, Willie McManus and Christy Doherty were also killed. Many more lay injured, fighting for their lives. Five of the seven injured died prematurely from their injuries. The gunmen casually made their escape in a blue Ford Escort, which had been parked adjacent to the bookmaker's shop. The gunmen had parked in a spot that had just been vacated by a UDR armoured vehicle. As local people frantically rushed to assist the injured and dying, some of the first people to arrive on the scene were two undercover corporals from the Weapons Intelligence Section of the British Army, Corporal Slater and Jones. It would later become apparent as to why they were required. The 9mm pistol was a British Army issue weapon. It is believed that they lifted the spent cartridge shells. RUC and UDA agent Ken Barrett had been instructed by his special branch handler to collect that same gun from Malone UDR Armoury, an arrangement that also involved British Army intelligence. In turn, Barrett handed the weapon to Billy Stoby, a UDA quartermaster. Stoby, also an RUC agent, then handed the weapon to his RUC special branch handler, who later returned it to Stoby. This weapon was then used in an attack on the Devonish Bar and Sporting Complex on Finnehy Road North Belfast by the UDA in December 1991, in which Aidan Wallace was killed and several others injured, including a young boy who lost an eye, then again used at the bookmakers. The automatic rifle used in the attack was from a consignment of weapons imported to Ireland from South Africa to re-arm loyalism. This involved MI5, RUC Special Branch and Security Service through a number of their agents. It also involved the DUP-linked Ulster Resistance. With the provision of weapons, the UDR presence until just before the attack, the arrival of the Weapons Intelligence Section, the role of UDA handlers and agents, and the ability of the killers to move unhindered, it wasn't long before the word collusion was used in the attack on the bookies, and not without good cause. There has never been an effective investigation into the attack on Sean Graham's bookmakers. No one has ever been held to account. Indeed, the killers were stopped in a getaway vehicle in the early hours of the next morning, with the driver over the legal limit of alcohol. Prior to this, they had been logged by the RUC as being in the vicinity of the bookmakers prior to the attack. Forensic and ballistic evidence was deliberately ignored. Eyewitness evidence and identification of the gunmen were ignored. Indeed, the RUC claimed that a key witness who positively identified one of the gunmen was a Republican who had previously been charged with murder and was therefore unreliable. This person never had as much as a parking ticket. The RUC and British military concealed the origin of the 9mm pistol used in the attack. However, this was detected by the Stevens inquiry into collusion and referenced as significant. Stevens recommended the prosecution of the special branch handlers involved. The Public Prosecution Service refused to prosecute. Former head of RUC special branch, Raymond White, accompanied the then Chief Constable of the RUC, Sir Hugh Ansley, along with George Caskey, to the scene of the bookmaker's attack, where Ansley gave an interview to the press, stating, This is murder madness, but it is not out of control. As a retired head of Special Branch, White has been centrally involved in vexatious legal challenges to halt and disrupt the work of the police ombudsman in their inquiries into collusion, and Caskey, worked closely with the secretive and shadowy force research unit of the British Army, which specialised in running agents. 
the PSNI refused to provide information to the police ombudsman. This led to an unprecedented move whereby the previous ombudsman had to initiate legal action against the PSNI, who handed over some, but not all, material. Despite an assurity that all intelligence was provided, 30 boxes of sensitive intelligence documents were later discovered in a civil case taken by the families. Boxes which the PSNI did not disclose to the Ombudsman. The PSNI have also resorted to the use of secret courts regarding disclosure and discovery of intelligence in this case. Why? And what do they have to hide on behalf of the RUC and military intelligence? To add insult to injury, the PSNI provided the assault rifle used in the attack to the Imperial War Museum in London as part of its public military display about the war in Ireland. The Browning pistol was eventually recovered from the son of a former RUC officer en route to murder several Catholic workmen. This fact was concealed. Families have continually faced obstacles, obfuscation, insult and been deliberately frustrated in their attempts to get to the truth. Incontrovertible evidence of state collusion and the use of agents exists on every level in the bookmaker's atrocity, including in the attempted cover-up. That collusion is continued by the PSNI. They need to desist from blocking the truth. In the meantime, relatives have died waiting on the police ombudsman's report. There can be no further delay. The report is completed. The families, supported by Relatives for Justice, call on the Police Ombudsman to publish the report in full, without further delay. Justice delayed is justice denied.